Well, hello everybody! Welcome to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. It's another episode, and I promised I would show you when I made the uh, um, spice racks. So that's where we are right now. We're in the shop, and uh, I'll show you the uh, the spice racks. Uh, that's the one for the larger ones. That will be on the bottom of the door, and then this one will be on the top of the door. It's laying down because. I had to make these little tabs to hold these things onto the door with. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about that in a second. But uh, this uh, top shelf here, I got to thinking, well, I'm going to put a little border around there. So I glued this little unit together and I've got it being held down. This spice is what's going to go on there is these types of spice rack, uh, spice holders. But, uh, yeah, this is a lead weight. It's uh, probably uh, 12 pounds. And uh, it's holding it down because there's no nails or, or brads or anything in that. It's just glued in place. And I pre-glued the, uh, the corners um, down here using the uh, clamps and uh, the uh, corner angles. And then I had this big 15-pound uh, weight up against it so that it wouldn't move while it was uh, drying. So I had one of these on each corner and uh, that had the unit in there clamped in place. And then these were on the outside, just try and hold it nice and square against the uh, the edges. So it came out okay. These are my little, my little sketches that I put together before I came out and built these. So you see the, um, the little brackets on here and see if I can get some light on those. And I've got two little brads holding them in place, nailed right through the metal into the shelving. I got two at the top and two at the bottom. And I'll be putting um, uh, truss head screws, uh, probably a three quarter inch or maybe, no, I think I'll go with half inch uh, truss head screws, right, screw it right into the door. So I'm still deciding whether I'm gonna paint these or, uh, or not. I kind of like the wood look, uh, especially with a spice rack. But, uh, and they're going to be inside of a door anyway. And I've seen a lot of spice racks out there that you could buy. And they're all, all always wood grain. So maybe I might just rub some stain on these. Give them a, a little stain color. And uh, a, a little sealer. So that I don't have to worry about warpage or anything like that. And then I'll hang them up. So anyway. Uh, yeah, the uh, let's see if I can turn this one over. And you can see where I put the two little brads in there. And they're not actually called brads. They're called wire nails. These are 18 gauge by 5 eighths. And uh, I happen to have all of this stuff laying around. And I made these uh, little hangers out of um, some scrap uh, galvanized metal. And this is like uh, 22 gauge. It's not very heavy, but it's great for making hangers like this. And they won't take up too much space and hold it away from the door. So I just uh, held the bra the brads with the needle nose and then drove them right through the, uh, the metal. So how did I make a nice hole in there? No, I didn't drill it because if you try drilling a little piece of metal like that and the drill catches in it, that thing will spin around and become a, a spinning knife and slice your hands up. And uh, even with gloves on, it'll cut right through gloves, especially those sharp corners. So what I did was, I have another neat little special tool here I'm going to introduce you to. This is another Harbor Freight tool. And it's called a uh, Lifetime Carbide 9-piece Punch and Die Set. Okay, so what, how, how does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. You take your little piece of sheet metal, and it slides right in through like this. And then you choose which uh, punch you want. Let's go with a 3 because that's what I used on those. And on, this, on these punches, they have a squared off edge. And then they have a chamfered edge. So the chamfered edge is not your cutting edge. The, the sharp edge is. So I'm going to drop that right into the hole that, that it goes into. Then you take your hammer and you drive it through like that. Now, you're going to have to use pliers to pull it out because it uh, it doesn't, once it goes through the metal, it makes a real sharp cut. So I use those uh, those pliers over there, those wireman's pliers. I just pull it back out again 
But uh, that's how I made those holes in the in that metal. And as you can see, like if it, if this was a drill and it caught on there, you can see how that thing would spin the same speed as your drill press. And uh, that thing coming around just slice your hands up. So do not drill sheet metal like that. If you if you're going to drill, drill sheet metal on a drill press, make sure you have a good way of clamping it down, like between two pieces of wood or something like that. All right. So that's that's my little. Harbor Freight tool. I've had this for years and I love it. It comes in handy all the time and it goes all the way up to a three-quarter inch hole. So I can I can do a three-quarter inch hole through metal with that one. And uh, it works on paper, it works on cardboard, anything that'll fit in between the, the, the plastic plate and the aluminum plate at the bottom you can punch a hole through with this. So pretty cool, huh? All right. So that's how these were made. This is all ready. This one's ready to go and hang. If, but I think I will do the stain on them. Now that one piece of wood there, that one wasn't supposed to get used. I was supposed to use this one. And uh, as you can see, that's the, the right uh, piece to go in there. But somehow when I was working, I had it upside down this way. And I didn't see that knot in there. So... <laughs> It ended up getting installed, and these are all glued together. Um, one of my favorite glues right here for doing woodworking. This stuff dries very quickly, and uh, it's interior use only, but uh, for doing little furnitures, furnishings and things like that, that's a great glue right there. And they have the premiums, and the this is the original. I like the originals. Um, it's usually set and tacky within 20 minutes or a half an hour. All right. So we got that done. Now we're going to move on down. And uh, I did do the uh, broom hanger inside of the other door. And I want to show you how that came out. And uh, it was actually easier than I thought it was going to be because the broom I have has a metal handle on it. So I didn't have to put a little metal plate somewhere on the door or anything like that. I just screwed the magnet right to the door and here it is right here and you can see the the magnet right there and it just holds the the metal handle up against it and on the top here I modified a coffee cup hook by cutting it off and then grinding it so it's not sharp where I wouldn't won't hurt myself on it but all I have to do is pull it away from the magnet and lift it right off the hook and I got my broom. When I want to put it back, I just hang it on there and it clicks right into place. And when you move the door, it doesn't swing and go clang, clang, bang, to clang. All right, so that's that little thing there. And uh, let's see, we're gonna move on down the road because I started off the day in the garden and uh, can't neglect my garden. And it was a, it started off as a nice calm day then the winds came up a little bit and now they're calmed down again but there's a, a little breeze i'd say probably six or seven miles per hour this is the way i i like the breeze because it uh, it keeps me uh comfortable in in the heat out here and uh moves things around and yesterday my allergies were really getting at me the humidity was way up Corn is really getting up there. So anyway, my cabbage heads are growing to cabbage here. And uh, you remember those two little trees? And I said, I, I don't know what they are. I'm not to let them go a little further. And then uh, I got to thinking about them. And I said, you know, those are really familiar. So I'm giving my best guess. And my best guess is, see if anybody else notices, this is apricot. Uh... I'm not pretty sure that leaf is apricot. And the other one, this one, I think is cherry. I think this is a cherry tree. It's got the red stem and the reddish green leaves. That might be a, a cherry tree. Anybody got any guesses, good guesses out there? Post them in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you. All right, so everything's coming up really nice here. I've been eating strawberries, 
uh, daily and I'd see another one down there. Oh yeah, there's another one there. So I get a, a strawberry a day off this thing or off these things. And that's a good thing, I like that. So I got these transplanted into bigger pots so that they have room to grow because they were getting root bound in those little tiny one quart pots. And I tied up all of these tomatoes today. I had my stakes already in place, but I had to tie them up because the wind will blow these things over and snap them off. And the winds come up just without warning around here, so you gotta be careful about that. Now something's been on this one eating leaves, but I checked it out pretty good and I didn't see any uh, green cutworms on it anywhere. But I'm gonna keep my eyes open because the chickens love those, they're, they're really tasty and full of nitrogen. Uh, none of the others seem to be bothered by it, but just that one. So I'll have to see what's going on there. All right, hey, my okra, it's found a home. I guess that's Oklahoma. Yeah, cool. My uh, eggplant coming up pretty good. My cantaloupe over there is getting healthier. And my um, acorn squash over there has already got a couple of flowers on it. Cool. This, uh, this other grapevine finally took, and uh, it's growing like crazy. I won't get any grapes on it this year because I don't have br browned woody stem. It is all green stem. Uh, you gotta wait till you get that woody stem before it has enough energy to produce grapes. So anything that does pop out of there as a, a grape, will it'll probably just be very tiny little BB sized grapes and uh, they won't amount to anything. But uh, yeah, everything's really healthy around here. So my carrot here has gone to seed and uh, pretty soon I'll be able to get some carrot seeds off of there so I can replant. And then I'll pull that carrot up and eat it. And uh, look at these early girls. They are going nuts. And again, there's something been eating the leaves at the top of this thing. And I don't see any green uh, caterpillars anywhere on here. Although there are a bunch of moths around. You can see this one's been eaten. But I, I think what these are is uh, I've noticed that there's some uh, locusts around. Not a whole bunch like last year, but there are some locusts. And they can get through this wire. So they'll sit on these things and, and munch like that. And they usually go right at the top where the uh, the green ones, uh, those green cutworms, they'll, they'll just start eating and they'll wipe a whole plant out in a day. Oh, so anyway, my... Uh, Mulberry trees are still doing well, and like I said, corn is really coming up everywhere. So the corn looks like I'm going to have a good crop this year, and uh, I'll have to can some of that because there's no way I'm going to eat that much corn when it all comes out. All right, everybody, loving my spinach. I made a tuna fish salad sandwich for lunch today, and instead of lettuce on it, I used spinach leaves. Oh my God, that was good. I'm going to have to do that again. I plucked off a couple of celery stems and uh, chopped that up and threw it in there. And I cut off some uh, green onion and put, put that in there. So, yeah, really, really good stuff. Love it. All right, everybody. That's it for now. Pear. I will remind you, please, to give me a thumbs up down there. Right down there. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. G-Bear, signing off.